Kitchen Creations with Robert. Again, it's always a pleasure having you in my kitchen. Today we're going to create something interesting. Uh, it's something that I kind of created a while back and my family tends to really always want me to make this whenever I, I'm around. Uh, it's a favorite of the families. Um, I'm going to do a stuffed dumpling with plantains and then I'm going to top it with uh, tomato sauce with codfish. Um, it has a little island flavor to it. Um, again, you'll see more and more. A lot of my dishes will bring in some of the island feel to it. So we're using plantains to stuff it. Hey, plantains. Um, I'm going to boil and mash the plantains um, and then season. And then <laughs> see, I guess he thinks this is funny. Um, then I'll season and stuff the plantains. Uh, not the plantains, I'll season and stuff the dumplings. Um, and uh, I might even pan fry the dumplings a little bit because it does give it a nice flavor as well. And then wash it with the cod. Um, typically what we do is in the islands you use a lot of uh, uh, salted fish or bacalao. Um, I opted to use just codfish because I don't understand why we do it because salt fish you have to take the salt soak to get try to get all the remove all the salt boil it soak it put or whatever I'm just gonna try the codfish and see how it comes out so simplify things having said that um, please guys take a minute to hit your subscribe button I'm always looking for those likes and comments comments are important because this way I know um, you know what you like about the recipe have you tried the recipe? Please let me know if you tried it and how it turned out for you. Again, bring your own personalities into it. I always say a recipe is a foundation and what we do to it is all the accessories that we add to it, okay? So, let's get ready to cook. So, before I put my plantains to boil, let me show you, all I do is cut off the ends. I gonna cut them in three pieces each one these are not to completely ripe they're still firm when it's really soft you don't want it it won't will not work and when it's green the flavor is different so I chose to do sort of in between ripe and green throw them in the water about 15 minutes to boil and you can add a little salt to it I'm gonna let that boil and let's move on to the next so when my plantains are boiling, what I'm going to do is mix my dough for the dumplings. One and a half cups of flour. These dumplings tend to be more of a, you don't need anything but salt. But what I'm going to do is I'm adding one teaspoon of garlic powder and pinch baking powder because I want it to have a little bit of a rise. Not a lot, just a little. Too much baking powder is going to make it very airy. So. I just added a pinch and then to that we add one teaspoon of salt. You mix everything, incorporate everything well and now let's add our water and a little at a time bring it all together. I have a cup of water, let's see if I'm going to use all of it, I'll let you know but again some things like salt and water, it all depends on your environment as well you really have to look at the consistency more than the amount of water you're adding so I'm gonna keep adding my water here until everything comes together nice you do not want a really really soft dough you want it to be pretty firm because of the fact that we're gonna fill them and at this point we're pretty good we're just gonna add a little bit of flat water to bring it all together So we're pretty good here now so all we're gonna do is I'm gonna take it onto the table and give it a little bit more of a knead. And we're pretty good at this point here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it back in the bowl. I'm gonna let it sit for a while. I just want to let you guys know that I used half a cup of water in this dough, not the entire cup of flour, water, but again, it varies. 
So it's up to you guys, just make sure you have a nice the consistency. Plantains are done, so I removed it, drained them, got all the excess water off, and I'm just gonna show you, you just peel them off. Peel the skin off. It's still firm. It's not soggy. If you had used the really ripe plantains, it would have fallen apart. So let's, I'm gonna mash them up and we'll season them and get them ready for stuffing. So here are my mashed potatoes. No, it's not. Here are my mashed plantains. So let's get ready to prepare the seasonings that we're gonna add it to. So I'm adding my oil to a hot pan. It's a little hot, so I have one clove of garlic, half an onion finely chopped, and I'm also gonna throw in some coriander. What I have here is what I normally do is I add all my different seasonings and spices. I blend it together. So what I do is I take all the different seasonings and I um, stick it in the blender, blend it. I add thyme, cilantro, garlic, um, onions, blend it up with not a lot of liquid. And what I do, by the way, I just added three ounces of tomato paste. And what I do is I um, then use my ice tray and let it freeze and then I take them out and I use one cube at a time. It's perfect for um, for cooking one dish at a time. This way you don't have to go through one big frozen clump. So I'm adding just a little water. Let's get a little more in there. So add about three ounces of water. I've got just a little bit of crushed pepper. I'm just gonna add it. Cause it's a nice, between the sweet plantains and the zing of, I didn't add all, I just added just a bit, a pinch. And the zing of this crushed pepper becomes really nice. Pretty much it, I'm just pour my plantains in here. Give it a good mix. I wanna incorporate everything together. And the last thing we'll do is add some salt. And back with the masher. Just get it all mixed really nicely. If you feel like you need to add a little water to it, you can go ahead and do that. But you wanna incorporate all the sauce into the plantain. One and a half teaspoon of salt. I'm adding a little water just to get it all Really nice. It'll be easier to fill. You don't want it to be too soft or too runny, but I think we have a nice consistency. You want it to be pretty thick so we can just fill into the dough and not have them fall out. And we're pretty ready here at this point. Um, I'm gonna let it cool for a minute and then we will stuff our dumplings and put them in the water. My plantains have cooled a little, just here you go, I've stuck them in a bowl and let's move on to my dough. I'm gonna make some little balls to stuff our plantains with. And here we go, here are my balls, my dumplings, and here's all we're gonna do is, I wanna create this pocket. I'm just gonna put a little flour on my board or table, rolling it out a little. It's about a quarter inch thick. Just kinda get the ends. Okay, 
There we go. Just get a nice heap of your plantain. And look how rich this looks with the tomato paste in there. And what I do is I do a fold. I fold it this way. And I fold it the other way. Gosh. And pinch. Pinch my corner, the end. And we press. Of course, try not to get any of the sauce on it. But that's the problem with this. All right, so here's my shape. I'll do one more and then we'll continue. In the meantime, while I'm doing this, I have my water on the stove in the back, boiling. You can keep the other one next to you so you can keep, if you want to be consistent in all your shapes, that they're all the same size, you have one for comparison. So let me continue with all of these and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm done stuffing and I'm just gonna put them in the water. And we just take your time and put them one in at a time. And we're gonna let them boil. Usually what happens with these is that once they're done cooking, they'll probably, they'll, they normally rise. I say normally rise because in the kitchen, something always goes wrong. So as you can see, they've floated to the top. They're ready to come out. I'm gonna take them one at a time, set them on a plate, because I'm gonna then give them a pan fry. So while my dumplings are uh, cooling and draining all the liquid out of it, all the water, excess water out of it before we pan fry it, I'm going to start preparing the fish, um, doing the codfish. Um, so let me go over some of the ingredients with the tomatoes. I'm using tomatoes, but I'm using two different types of tomatoes. I'm using Roman tomatoes and your regular fine ripened tomatoes. Just some onions, again, the seasoning that I mentioned to you earlier that I freeze and put in the refrigerator. Um, salt, ginger, garlic, coriander, and that's basically it. I may add a little bit of other spices as we go along. It depends on how I feel. So what I'm going to do first is pan fry the cod, and then I'll add everything into the same pot so we can have all the flavors all incorporated. So let's get ready. So I'm just going to add some lemon juice to this cod fish, a little garlic powder, some seasoning salt or adobo and black pepper. Let me add some oil. A nice thick piece of cod here. Let it just cook for another minute and then we'll move on. And I'm, that's all. I'm removing it. I'm gonna just continue cooking the rest of it in here. So I'm gonna add a little more oil. And to the oil, I'm adding my ginger. Yes, I'm adding ginger. Some people might be like, what? Yes, it's ginger. I love ginger and garlic together. So here we go, ginger and garlic. Here's my garlic. Mix it up a little. Again, as I said before, you don't want to burn your garlic. You just want to get it nice. ginger, garlic, and next, onions. I added two cloves of garlic, and 
I have half an onion chopped. And I didn't go for a really thin chop. I wanted big chunks in here. And I'm just gonna let them sweat for a little bit. I'm gonna throw in my coriander and my one cube of frozen mixed seasoning. And at this point, I'm gonna add my tomatoes. What I did is I sliced my tomatoes really thin. Um, I didn't want them, because I wanted them to cook. And again, I'm using two types of tomatoes. Gonna have to let this cook now. At this point, just fry them up. And let's add salt. One and a half tablespoon of salt. Tomatoes usually need a little more salt than other vegetables. Um, if you're using salted fish or bacalao, you're gonna need less salt. Again, salt is something that it's really up to the individual and the taste. So I'm gonna let this cook. Um, I'm gonna move it onto the back stove and let it cook and then I'm gonna pan fry the uh, dumplings a little bit in the meantime. So guys, I've decided to change the recipe a little bit and I decided to add one tablespoon of curry powder. Now you can use any curry powder that you choose to. I don't wanna overwhelm it. I'm just adding the curry on top. I'm not cooking the curry. Okay, so again, this is why we call it Kitchen Creations because I'm now adding another tablespoon of ketchup. And I would actually think I might later on add a little bit more. So I'm adding... I'm trying to intensify that tomato soup. Now we could add some spice to this if you'd like and give it a little because it's the spiciness with the um, sweetness of the plantains go really well together but I'm choosing not to do that at this point. Cooking nicely I'm just gonna add, I'm adding just a little water to it and I'm gonna let it cook and cook a little bit more before I add my fish. So we're ready to put our dumplings into the pan. Just get a little... Fry on them, it's a little wet. Just give it a nice little fry. A couple minutes on each side. And we're good because they're cooked. You just want to kind of give it that flakiness on the outside. My dumplings are frying and I just got one of you guys to see how this looks. The tomatoes are pretty much reduced. And what I can do now is I'm just going to add the fish to it and let it simmer. You want the fish to actually fall apart as you move along. As it cooks, it'll just fall apart, which I'm just going to put this piece in here and the other piece goes in as well. It'll break up as we go as it cooks. So I'm getting just a light golden brown on this, which is exactly what I want. This is perfect. It's got a little cr crunch to it, so that's what I want on my dip, on my dumplings. Have a look at my fish, oops, and smells great, looks great, and I'm just squeezing some lemon juice onto it. And I'm gonna let it simmer a little more. This is perfect. Check the other side, nice. You don't wanna over brown them. 
to give it a nice light golden This one can use a little color, so I'm gonna leave him in there for a while. Okay, so I'm done with my dumplings. They have a nice golden brown. I didn't want them to overcook them and get them too dark. Nice and one of them cracked, as I, I thought when I saw the um, water. When, I was, when they were boiling, so one of them came through. My fish is ready as well, and let's put this on a plate. Again, for all you people that are from the Caribbean, we all know what bacalao, salt fish is, and this is my kind of uh, play on that. Um, so, let me plate this dish. And we'll have a look at it. I'll cut it open and we can look at it. It smells amazing. So guys, here you have it. It's our dumplings with our tomato and fish. Now, what I'm going to do is take a, I want to cut into this so you can get a real good look at what's inside. And as we cut into our dumpling. You can see the plantain inside. Of this. Hmm. Wow. I'll tell you what. It was a good call adding the curry powder because with the curry powder, the fish, um, the plantain, everything goes so beautifully together. Guys, I think this is one of those dishes that I'm gonna recommend that you should try. It wasn't something that I started out to make, but as I went along, I added things to it and I said, okay, and this is what happens sometimes. It's what it's called being creative in the kitchen. Adding your own touch to it. Mmm. The fish is amazing as well. So guys, again, Thank you for joining me today in Kitchen Creations. It's always a pleasure and today especially because I think I'm going to remake this and I am going to add the curry powder into it again and I'm glad I was able to capture it on film. This way I can do it again because this is what happens all the time when I'm home alone. I make stuff and then I go, to back, go, on, go back to make it another day and it doesn't come out the same. So great thing about doing this and sharing with you guys is that I'm also able to capture it for myself and whenever I like, I can go back and refer it to it and recreate it as well. I tell you guys, try this dish, make it, the dumplings, even if you do the dumplings alone with just tomatoes without the fish, it's amazing. So, try it. I'm sure you're going to like it. And until then, I thank you for joining me today. Please, remember to be happy, keep smiling, keep safe, and Keep cooking.